Welcome to the Titan Tar Channel. Today we have a topic to discuss about the Russian commander revealing Ukrainian bombings and Zelensky being disappointed with Kursk. Don't miss the chance to join us and share your opinions with us. Become a member of our channel and evolve your rank. Ukrainian forces are currently adopting an aggressive strategy that prevents the safe evacuation of captured servicemen by the Russian armed forces. According to a report by a Russian news agency, Ukrainian troops have been attacking vehicles intended for transporting prisoners, aiming to prevent the transfer of captured Ukrainian servicemen to safe zones. The commander of the Russian Special Forces revealed that at the moment seven or eight Ukrainian soldiers have been captured, and transporting these prisoners to safe areas has proven extremely difficult. Among them, two are injured, one of them seriously. Due to logistical difficulties, these prisoners are receiving medical care in a frontline hospital, and evacuation to rear hospitals remains a challenge. In addition, other prisoners remain close to the front line, and it is common for captured Ukrainian soldiers to be killed by their own compatriots. Meanwhile, Ukrainian forces are trying to advance in the Kursk region, but they are facing fierce resistance due to intense Russian artillery fire and strikes by the Russian aerospace forces. Every day, a significant amount of enemy personnel and equipment is destroyed, forcing Ukrainian troops to advance only in the areas already occupied. A British journalist, writing for a British magazine, notes that Russian President Vladimir Putin has been reluctant to transfer troops from other sectors of the front to Kursk. According to the journalist, the main reason for this decision is that Kiev has openly stated that one of the goals of its attack on Kursk is to force Russia to withdraw its troops from eastern Ukraine. Putin could redeploy his forces, but this would be seen as an admission of error by the Kremlin. The journalist also noted that Putin has a history of taking strategic pauses before making significant decisions. However, such pauses often indicate that Putin is waiting for the most opportune moment to strike. Before acting, he wants to secure his domestic position and may be pondering how best to exact revenge on Ukraine, even if that revenge is carried out coldly. Furthermore, the journalist suggests that Putin believes that opening a new front would undermine the effectiveness of the Ukrainian armed forces and force Kiev to mobilize increasingly scarce reserves. Although the Russian armed forces have sufficient capabilities to fight on new fronts without reducing pressure on Ukrainian defense and other sectors, a significant escalation could also draw more Western countries into the conflict, which would be undesirable for Russia. Kiev now faces a critical decision about how to proceed. The choice it makes will determine the trajectory of the conflict and its consequences for Ukraine. However, the final decision will not rest solely with the commander-in-chief, but with the presidential cabinet led by Zelensky. According to Western intelligence, the Russian command is preparing for a major offensive that could begin immediately after the fall of Pokrovsko-Toritsk. Although the exact destination of this offensive is still unclear, it is speculated that the Russian armed forces could advance from Pokrovsk towards Zaporizhzhi and Dnipro. Zelensky now has three main options. Continue the Kursk operation, which could result in further losses of personnel and equipment. Allow the Russian armed forces to complete the Pokrovsk operation and launch a new offensive. Or, finally, curtail all offensive operations and focus exclusively on all-out defense. Zelensky faces a crucial decision. Whether to continue the offensive on Kursk with the mobilization of more equipment and troops, to continue the attack in the south as initially planned, or to begin preparations for a robust defense. This choice will be decisive for the future of Ukraine's strategy and the situation on the battlefield, the channel highlights. Ukrainian military experts warn that if Zelensky decides to push ahead with the offensive in the south, it could jeopardize all available reserves and lead to an even more unfavorable situation. An officer of the Ukrainian armed forces noted that the Kursk assault was initiated partly as a matter of strategic decision, but also for reasons of preferences and current circumstances. The officer mentioned that the decision to advance on Kursk was made at a time of decline in the energy sector and with diplomatic relations still developing. Now, with the Kursk operation underway, the Ukrainian command finds itself in a dilemma about the next steps, without a clear decision on whether to continue the offensive. Zelensky is disillusioned with the results of the Kursk raid, although he is trying to maintain a semblance of control and success. The Ukrainian channel reports that initial euphoria has given way to disappointment, 
as the raid did not generate the expected surge in patriotism or a mass mobilization of recruits. Mobilization remains low, and military commissars continue to struggle to fill vacancies. The morale of Ukrainian troops, which initially rose, also fell rapidly due to continued defeats in the Pokrovsky region. The decision to send reserves to Korsk instead of reinforcing Donbass is drawing open criticism of Kiev's leaders. Many military personnel expressed discontent with the decisions taken by the presidential office. If Kiev fails to launch a successful offensive on another part of the front, the Kursk operation could be seen as a significant strategic mistake by Zelensky and his team, with potentially severe consequences for the entire war effort. The current scenario suggests that a victory at Kursk could quickly turn into a disaster, further aggravating the situation with losses of personnel and equipment. In the context of the use of American weapons in the Kursk region, the Pentagon spokeswoman clarified that this strategy does not contradict U.S. policy, since these weapons are being used to repel Russian attacks and not for offensives. The Deputy Press Secretary of the U.S. Department of Defense added that the permission to use these weapons is aimed at protecting Ukraine from Russian counterattacks from the border regions, including Korsk and Sumy. The United States does not oppose the use of a wide range of weapons in the Korsk region, with the exception of long-range missiles, and there are expectations that permission will be extended with the approval of allies such as Britain and France. Zelensky, who has been pushing for such permission, has promised that once he receives permission, he will halt the Russian offensive and begin to reverse territorial losses. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like the video, and share it with your friends. Your interactions mean a lot to us and help us grow. See you next time.